This is Jerome Corsi, and today is Friday. It's March 31st, 2023. Uh, the big news today is uh, the indictment of Donald Trump, which is expected to come out of Manhattan. And uh, he's in Florida. I suspect there'll be a little bit of difficulty on the extradition, but he'll probably get extradited. Uh, this, I think, is a disgrace. I think I've been through it with Mueller when the Russian collusion investigation and the Mueller special prosecutor wanted to indict me because I could not have, I did not have contact with Julian Assange. They thought I did. That was the last link they needed to get Trump on Russian collusion. I wrote a book about it called Silent No More. And for those of you who followed my case, I can tell you that it is a horror show to go through the fear of being in, indicted and imprisoned by these Democrats for political crimes. Uh, I was never indicted. I did not lie, did not have a contact with Julian Assange, and uh, ultimately the prosecutors were the ones who were the criminals. And I think, again, we have a case where if we're going to begin indicting, criminalizing politics, uh, Donald Trump is the first former president to be criminally indicted in the history of the United States. This is an important historic day and tragic because once a country goes into indicting its politicians, unless there are legitimate crimes, clearly partisan, the Stormy Daniels affair has been gone over by prosecutors at the federal level very thoroughly and no charges were ever brought against Donald Trump. It's clearly a political move and it will probably backfire against the Democrats who I think have just boosted Donald Trump's popularity simply because he's now being a victim of political crimes, which the Democrats have no problem committing. While a dual standard of justice, double standard, where the Bidens are not even seriously looked after, despite the using of their offices, Joe Biden's offices, vice president, even going back to when he was in the Senate, for financial gain and to have compromised himself to China as the Biden family have uh, is, I think, very serious in terms of our politics for what we're really going to be discussing today. But I thought it was necessary for me to weigh in on this, and I want everyone to know I consider this to be a tragic day in the history of the United States. I think uh, this is a, a, a disgraceful move on the part of the radical left Democrats who are neo-Marxist, and it's only going to be destructive to the future of the United States. I think we, we as a people can overcome this, but only if, again, we insist upon a complete overhaul of the Department of Justice. And I think it's time for a new church committee. I'm calling for a new church committee, which was a committee that investigated the politicalization during the Nixon administration of the intelligence agencies in the Department of Justice in the United States during the Vietnam War. And we have that going on today in massive quantities against anyone who is a Donald Trump supporter or who believes in the U.S. Constitution and increasingly even who begins and believes in God. This is a dangerous trend. I've written books about it. I'm going to continue writing books about it. But I think that we are at a moment in our history where we've got to repudiate these kinds of moves as completely disgraceful. Uh, the Democrats ought to be ashamed of themselves. And the Republicans in Congress, I don't think you can have, you know, this is no longer being supportive of the, of the Republicans. I think they're in many ways just as bad as the Democrats. But the point is we need uh, a, a strong support constitutionally of saying we do not want political justice departments in the United States. My producer today is, is Chris. Chris is producing the show. Chris has done a great job doing this. And Chris, do you want to comment on this as well? Again, I would think it's a distraction. I also think if Donald Trump uh, snatched somebody's purse in Manhattan, Alvin Bragg would have let him go. So that's a different story for a different day. But this is about a uh, prosecutor trying to make a name for himself. 
especially in the especially amid all the controversy of his uh, catch and release and his, his refusal to prosecute real crimes, uh, as as well as the failures of the state attorney general Tish James to get anything on Donald Trump. They uh, they're relying on testimony from a uh, a known shyster, if you will, uh, Michael Cohen, whose colleagues have already said he's going to say and do anything to get out of uh, uh, trouble on his own. Uh, they've also said that what he's been saying about uh, President Trump has been rather phony. You have people like Maxine Waters and Adam Schiff celebrating over absolutely nothing because these are people that have accomplished nothing over the years. They think this is an accomplishment. Uh, while, it, it, while it's celebratory for these people, like you said, they inadvertently made Donald Trump a political martyr because, and, and it shows the American people that this administration is not beyond taking in political prisoners, or at least supporting those who do. Well, and also uh, Soros-supported, George Soros-supported prosecutor, which again across the country are refusing to prosecute criminals while going after people who are politically uh, opposed to this woke agenda. But let's get into the, the real substance that I want to talk about today and the real focus of the show right now, which is economics and cryptocurrency. I'm focusing increasingly on both topics. But the there are some developments going on that are going to be that are extremely important that are going to be overlooked given the Donald Trump news. I want to start with this first article here about uh, China and Brazil. Yesterday we reported that China was striking deals with uh, Saudi Arabia. China has been dealing around the world. And right now China has a, another series of deals for massive trade, they do about $150 billion a year trade with, with Brazil, and they're going to do the trade in yuan, which is the currency of China. Now, why this is significant is that most people don't really understand that the dollar has been the reserve currency of the, United, of the world since Bretton Woods, which was an agreement that was reached in Bretton Woods, uh, at the hotel in Bretton Woods up in... New England, uh, right after World War II. Uh, actually, perhaps even right as World War II was concluding. The, the point is that the dollar is the way international trade has been conducted since the end of World War II. Uh, people buy things in one country to, you know, from, from another country, and that trade is transacted in dollars and then switched into the currencies of the two countries, that's enabled international trade to be very strong and robust since the end of World War II. We're moving to a different system. And the move away from the dollar as an international reserve currency is going to significantly weaken the dollar. The dollar's already weakened by this massive spending and debt. We now have a $30 trillion federal debt, which costs an enormous amount just to pay the interest on that debt. And it's, it's a burden that is probably not long-term sustainable, but growing. And when we have a world it, that is this much indebted, including individuals indebted, a debt society is going to collapse. And the dollar is headed for a collapse. Now, if we go to the second story I want to cover today, which I think is uh, equally important, it has to do with the fact that the dollar is losing its standard. I mean, this is really the, the substance of what I'm talking about. This is an article that was posted up on Zero Hedge. But they're pointing out that it was I got Zoltan Posar. His name is Z-O-L-T-A-N, Zoltan, P-O-Z-S-A-R. Now, I've been following him for some time. He's a analyst. He has written a lot for Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse just basically went bankrupt and was taken over by UBS, which is the largest bank in Switzerland, the two largest banks in Switzerland. I want to read you something that Zoltan Posar warned in 2022. He said, we are witnessing the birth of Bretton Woods III, a new world monetary order centered around commodity-based currencies in the East that will likely weaken the euro-dollar system and will contribute to inflationary forces in the West. He's right. What he's saying is that Russia and China 
are both now moving toward gold and commodities to back their currency. Russia did this when it demanded payment of its natural gas in rubles that pushed people into gold in order to get rubles. And basically, Russia has strengthened its gold position, as has China, but basing their currencies on actual value, commodities like oil, uh, commodities like the ability to get raw, uh, rare minerals, which China has. And if the euro dollar collapses, the inflationary forces here are going to be massive. So Zoltan Posar continues, what we're seeing at the 50-year anniversary of the 1973 OPEC supply shock, Jimmy Carter's presidency when OPEC had an embargo on oil and gas lines were around the country trying to fill up our cars with gasoline, for those of you who are alive and adult and remember. So it's the 50th year anniversary of the 1973 OPEC supply shock is something similar but substantially worse the 2022 Russia supply shock, uh, which is, isn't is driven by the supplier, but the consumer, because it was Europe who imposed the sanctions on Russia. Russia was at- retaliating. In 1973, it was OPEC who caused the crisis by having an embargo uh, on their oil, and the United States suffered. The crisis is not like anything we've seen since President Nixon took the U.S. dollar off gold in 1971, the end of commodity-based money. So if if money is simply not based on something like gold, it's it's fiat. It's just made up, and there's no limit. Even this modern monetary theory, which the left has proposed, says since it's fiat currency, you can print as much as you want. And since it's fiat currency... Our national debt's not a problem because we can always print more currency to pay off the debt. Now, that is insanity because it is a simply a printing press operation. It has no real fundamental basis in reality. Uh, people criticize cryptocurrency as fabricated out of nothing. Well, the dollar was the model upon which cryptocurrency is based. When the crisis is over, the U.S. dollar will be much weaker. That's what, that's what uh, Pozar is saying, and he's right. Uh, he's basically an investment strategist, but he's uh, saying that the fundamentals for investing in gold and silver have never been stronger. Uh, Pozar joined the Federal Reserve Bank in New York in August 2008. He was the point person on market developments for senior Federal Reserve, Treasury, and White House officials through the 2008-2009 global debt crisis, which we're also going through again, which was caused by the subprime real estate crashing. And subsequently, the IMF International Monetary Fund, he consulted with G7 and G20 policymakers on global macro financial developments. He wrote this paper for Credit Suisse in March 2022, And he argued the global economy is going through a phenomenon fundamentally different from normal business cycles. It's the the birth of this Bretton Woods 3. He's basically saying what's going to emerge from the current global liquidity crisis, which we're going through right now, and it's only at the very beginning, uh, essentially uh, a shift involving the advancement of commodity-based currencies in the BRIC nations led by Russia and China. He reasoned that the, we will emerge from this global liquidity crisis uh, in a new era where international currency is going to have to be backed by gold or other commodities. And Russia and China uh, are basically demanding that their purchases of their oil or natural gas be in their currencies, rubles uh, in Russia, yuan or um, Ren, renminbi, which is another name for the yuan in China. Uh, basically, foreign governments are going to have to trade their national currencies for gold, and the foreign governments then basically use the gold to purchase natural gas from Russia and China. In the process, the Russia and China have currencies that become basically gold-backed. 
Now that's I, 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 fundamental. I mean, I can't sh emphasize for you how important this is. And uh, again, people are not educated on economics. It's kind of a strange subject for most people, but we've been living in a world where the dollar has been very strong because it's been a reserve currency. That's ending. Okay, so when we look at this next article that I posted here, which is that um, gold has risen yesterday. Uh, that was on Thursday, March 30th, 2023. It hit about 1980 $1,980 because of the weaker dollar and inflation fears. Weaker dollar meaning that the dollar is losing its reserve status and inflation is happening, and inflation is going to only accelerate if the dollar weakens. Now, gold has been hitting some highs this month. On March 24th, it was at $1,984. What gold is challenging is $2,000 at an ounce. Now, that's a resistance level. Anyone who knows how stock analyses, technical stock analyses goes, stocks or gold commodities trade within a range. There's a high range and a low range. So when the price gets near the high, it's called a resistance point because it tends to bounce back from that high. When it breaks through the high, it's set to new resistance levels. That's very important. The same at the low point. When it gets up to a low value, it tends to rebound and gain value. Uh, but if it breaks through the current low level, a new low level is established, and the entire commodity or stock moves down in value. Now, what's happening with gold is gold is challenging the upper resistance levels. And when gold breaks through $2,000 an ounce, it's going to be dramatic, and it's going to be very important. Now, again, uh, Chris, I want to emphasize, and I want you to show for a minute here on the uh, the uh, Truth Central website where people can look at the sponsor. And I want you to go specifically to Swiss America, who is our partner, our sponsor in this, in this new website, and go to, so you basically click down on the Sponsor tab, You'll see Swiss America and this Walking Liberty half dollar special. These are beautiful coins. They are a half dollar and they are a very high content in silver. And if you contact Swiss America and there's just basically fill in this form, uh, you'll get contacted. You can, with a consultation with Swiss America, you can basically buy up to 250 of these coins at essentially what they cost and what their value is in terms of the silver. So it's a very, very good deal. And it's meant to be an introductory offer. The, the value of Swiss America, and I've worked with them since 2004, is that Swiss America, which is now 20 years, go close to, next year it will be, uh, they are consultative. They do consultative selling. In other words, let's say you have a few dollars or small amount of money you want to put into gold or silver they'll devise a plan for you even a monthly plan or if you've got ten thousand or a hundred thousand dollars you want to put into gold to preserve the value of your of your savings or even take your ira or your 401k or whatever and put it into uh, gold uh, swiss american can help you do it according to the rules and uh, preserve your tax status uh, on a tax deferred account, or they can get you actual get actual gold and silver. But the key of Swiss America is they're consultative. You get a counselor who looks at your financial situation and advises you both as to what kind of precious metals you ought to buy and what you ought to have for your particular needs. I encourage you to go to a consultative seller like Swiss America rather than to someone who's saying we'll give you free silver and you get silver certificates which may end up being worthless okay now let's go back again to the website and i want to pick up on a couple of more topics here these related to cryptocurrency there are some big developments in cryptocurrency specifically this article about the uh, ct the commodities future trading commission they're going to be hearing a lot more about the commodities future trading commission because it's a 
another agency like the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, and they are both wanting to regulate cryptocurrency. Now, this article specifically is about Binance, which is one of the biggest exchanges. Okay, so if you want to buy cryptocurrency, you've got to find an exchange on which that cryptocurrency is bought and sold. And you can go to that exchange, Binance, and you can buy whatever cryptocurrency is on there. Uh, Binance is not itself a cryptocurrency. It's an exchange. That's why it says it's the world's largest crypto marketplace. Now, the accusations here, of the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, have to do with the accusations that the one of the leaders, one of the CEOs of Binance had an arm that was also an investment arm with Binance US, and there were shady dealings between the investment arm and the exchange. Now, it's the same type of argument that happened to FTX. FTX, the leader of FTX is under criminal indictment, and it's basically collapsed, losing billions of dollars in another scheme, which is very similar to what Binance is being accused of. Now, in a sense, CFTC, the Commodities Future Trading Commission, is looking at this exchange as an exchange which is dealing with commodities, and they're looking at all the cryptocurrency as a commodity. It's a token of, essentially, most of them are fiat made up, uh, but without any backing of any substantive value, like Pozar was arguing that Russia and China are going to gold. Well, there's no gold backing cryptocurrencies. But the point is, if the exchanges, and the SEC, by the way, wants to consider that cryptocurrency is a security because it can, has an indefinite value. It could go up and it can go down, which is the nature of selling in a security. And so as such, the SEC wants to regulate cryptocurrency as a stock or bond, something that can vary in value. Now, it's a very complicated argument, but you've got two massive federal regulatory agencies with great powers going after cryptocurrency. I think the shakeout of this is that the uh, banks that will survive, and I don't think there's going to be very many banks that survive what's coming, the credit crunch that's coming, will actually be the exchanges, they'll own the exchanges for cryptocurrency. And I believe that some cryptocurrencies will have to be securities. If you create a cryptocurrency that can fluctuate in value, well, then that's going to have to be a security. If you uh, create basically a cryptocurrency of fixed value, you know, which is a token that cannot vary, that perhaps will not be a security. And then I believe there'll be like XRP or Stellar. These are not really cryptocurrencies. They're more... Um, algorithms that will be used in international trade to facilitate the transfer of money. They'll be part of payment systems. So I can see XRP being built into a system that is run by JP Morgan Chase on which you can buy cryptocurrencies. The banks want to control the cryptocurrency market. And the federal government does not want this to be independent of the you know, independent way to hold value. And that's what's being debated right now. And I think we're going to see a shakeout in this market. Some cryptocurrencies are going to go away. Many already have. There have been some cryptocurrency failures. Others, I think, are going to survive. Uh, but the, it's fundamental shakeout going on now, not only with Russia and China asserting their continued, uh, not dominance, but their, their presence as a contender with the United States in international trade, we've lost our position. We've already lost it. We are no longer the world's reserve currency. That's only going to intensify. That's, that's in a sense, a tragedy for the economic prosperity of the United States and the world. But we're going to have China and Russia now 
and the BRIC countries, which include Brazil, Russia, India, China, and a whole network of other countries working with them, are going to become very strong. So we're going to have a strong developing sense of wealth in Asia, another centered around Russia, and Russia, I believe, is going to continue its insistence to dominate Eastern Europe. And the euro dollar, which is the United States and Europe, West, Western Europe, specifically the, even the UK included, uh, France and Germany and the other countries of the NATO, the European Union, are going to be economically weakened. And we're going to be engaged in a self-destruction, largely because of this uh, neo-Marxist woke culture, which seems to dominate now all of our institutions. And uh, the climate change agenda, which is moving us away from hydrocarbon fuels, whereas Russia and China are enhancing and developing their own hydrocarbon resources and plan to dominate that market. We're just abrogating our position as leader financially and economically because we have this insane culture of neo-Marxism and cultural Maoism. Now, I've, I've written... I'm writing a trilogy on this, which is called the Great Awakening Trilogy. The first book is out, which is the truth about energy, global warming, and climate change. It exposes climate lies in this age of disinformation. We are in an age of disinformation. What you're getting reported every day is a government-manufactured reality that you're being induced to believe. And the second book is on the truth about neo-Marxism, cultural Maoism, and anarchy, and it's exposing these woke lies in an age of dis disinformation. It's a whole new ideology, a godless ideology, which posits that we can create a utopia simply by willing it to be. It's Hegelian, it's destructive. Uh, you can see it being destructive in our own politics. That's reflected in Donald Trump's indictment today. So what I'm warning everyone is that we're going into a very dark period. And the economics here are, uh, which I'm predicting, we will have a very severe economic downturn, uh, which is only beginning. And it will be stagflation. It will be very stagnant growth economically with high inflation. Uh, it's going to be ruinous for those who uh, are credit-driven, uh, institutions and individuals, uh, there's going to be a crash in the mortgage market. Uh, this is a fundamental readjustment we're going through. And it is not going to be pleasant as people lose jobs, lose homes. Uh, we will have, I think, a return of concern over you know, whether people are going to starve in the United States. People are going to be uh, the real, I think, crisis for the woke culture will be when people realize that woke is broke. Woke is not only broke, woke is destructive, it's negative. We're destroying a set of values that have created the United States to be the greatest and most free, most powerful economically country in the world, which is the ability to produce prosperity for the world. We're destroying that. Um, Chris, do you want to say any final comments? Well, let's uh, let's put it this way. Look no further from as far as what you said about woke companies and wokeness uh, leading to lack of prosperity, uh, maybe a recession, and of course, companies going down. Look at Disney firing people right and left. Look at Facebook firing people right and left. We saw the most woke banks in America go down in the last couple of weeks. It's it, it's nice to pat yourself on the back and say, "Look at me, I'm a nice person," uh, but it's another thing, a, to actually perform those actions. And B, to well, it's just basically operate with uh, with some common sense, with some uh, uh, eye toward the future. Well, I think we're we're going to. Uh, I want to uh, post a few things at the end of the show t in the future, and um, you know, Second Corinthians seven fourteen, which is basically invoking God to in intervene. And as we repent of our sins, letting it get to this point, uh, not defending God, uh, I think we're, we need to, that's one of my major themes. 
I say, in the end, God always wins. In the end might mean a world war. In the end might mean an economic collapse. In the end might mean billions of people die. Uh, I've been trying to prevent that for 20 years. I've had the vision of this happening for over 20 years. And um, I'm not sure it can be prevented. But I resolved to get active again and that I, I can't sit by and allow this to happen without getting involved, trying to make an effort to educate everyone, to make everyone aware it can be prevented, but not in a godless society. Uh, this Jerome Corsi today is um, Friday, March 31st, 2023. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. We're going to do this show daily. Uh, thank you for joining us. Please spread the word on social media that um, we're back. I'm going to be doing these shows and posting them widely on social media. We'll be listing on the website very quickly where you can find us in addition to Rumble and other places where we're posting the podcast. God bless all. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Thank you. <laughs>